Uh, I'm Kevin Ono's Gold. Uh, I'm an artist from Melbourne, Australia. <laughs> I started painting about six years ago, full time, coming from a street art background where I was predominantly doing more aerosol art and stuff like that. Being so obsessed with the NBA as a young kid, my whole house, my whole bedroom, sorry, was like covered in NBA posters and stuff like that. And my parents always gave me the Space Jam stuff and Shaq posters all over my wall. But one thing that they gave me, which was everywhere, that was hanging right above my bed, was this. I looked at it every single night before I went to sleep and I was like, one day I would love to create something like that. And I've never found like the correct opportunity to do this, but like this being the 75 year anniversary, all tied in with like COVID lockdowns, I found like this was, this was just my opportunity. Like, I don't think I was gonna find a better time to do it than now. Living with purpose, that be us. Open the curtains, we get I try to space it out in terms of some newer players versus with some older players. So there's a bit of a mi mix and mash. And uh, I try to, if like, say for instance, there was like an iconic thing that they do, I would try and place that in there. Like Steph Curry chewing on his mouth guard, Melo doing the three point shot thing. Like little touches like that to kind of make it more interesting and interactive for the viewer. Um, in terms of scaling, I have, you know, the key 10, you know, guys like pretty big in the middle. But apart from that, like, it, it's just a mix and match balance around it. So first and foremost, it's Shaq. Shaq, when I was in second grade in 1992, he um, broke the ring and it was all over the news in Australia in a game. Um, and I turned to my mum and I saw it in the news. And I was like, I want to do that sport. So first and foremost, I was Shaq obsessed, always Shaq over Jordan. Um, followed him through to the Lakers and then Kobe came about in 1996 and been a Lakers fan ever, ever since and haven't veered from that. Giannis is such a calm and collected kind of player. He's very cool. Uh, he rarely loses his temper and he's just, he's such a beast. But like, when he's just dominating a game, like you can tell that, that that's what's going on inside him. So when he rare, rarely releases that kind of emotion, it's a magical thing. So I thought, why not, you know, capture that. I didn't grow up watching uh, Larry and Magic, but I did at a young age educate myself about it. Like at our public library, we had a uh, history of the NBA VHSs and I would go in there and I think I would rent them out and then like, come back, return them and rent them out again and then do that over and over. And I would have them in like spans of months and every Saturday morning I would sit down and watch it. You can't have one without the other. And they changed the game of basketball forever and they deserve to be together and tied together for all time. The reason why there's so many Lakers in the middle is I try to focus all the greats that like 
the, the consistent top 10 of all time and it just so happens that most of them have been Lakers. All right, so this is a question that people that have come by and seen the painting have consistently asked. And the reality is I'm an NBA fan and I've had, you know, my bias in it. So I painted my favorite jerseys. If I hate a team, I won't paint that like player in that team, e.g. Harden in Houston. It was like my most hated player ever. So I put him in a, my favorite Nets jersey of all time just simple reasons like that there's no particular other reasons i have countless countless screenshots and stuff of kobe i've painted him many many times and this is an angle that i'd never painted him before and i felt like you know it would be a bit more of a challenge uh, i toiled over for days and this is the one that I came up with. Dennis Rodman has countless amount of crazy hairstyles and everyone has their favorite. For me, it's always been the leopard. Here's the leopard. The leopard print was the 33, trying to convince Scottie Pippen to come back and play. Uh, I think it's the most iconic in my personal experience. Iverson was Kobe's rival. He was the number one pick. Kobe was the 13th pick. They were neck to neck at each other their whole careers. Um, I loved him. And back in the day, you couldn't find a person that did not not like Iverson. He was the underdog, the little, you know, angry man that just would score on everybody. I followed him. I had Sixers jersey. I had the Denver Nuggets jersey. I still have them. Um, yeah, he meant a lot to the league. He changed the culture of the league, the way people dress, their hairstyle. He really had a massive influence on the game. Uh, the Slim Reaper. Um, he is... I just love everything about... Like, I, I can't stop saying I love players. Like, I just... I really am an NBA fan. And you can't not love him. He, he is... A unique unicorn. He's, you know, this seven-foot monster that can score from anywhere on the court. He can drop 50 on you in any second. I had the pleasure of watching him go overtime against the Raptors and drop a 50 piece. Uh, he belongs up there. He's the one of the greatest scorers of all time, if not the greatest scorer of all time. When it's going to be all said and done. It's such a tough thing talking about who is actually the GOAT, you know. Um, if you ask me for my personal opinion, I would say it's Kobe, of course. But like, the reality is we all know it's Michael Jordan. But LeBron is very close on his tails. And I, I would argue that if he gets, the, you know, Kareem's unbreakable record, that he, he has to be considered 1A and 1B to Jordan. and. You know, you can flip flop them around, but they're, they're equal GOAT. Like, there's no one that's going to come close to them. The accolades that they've achieved are, like, pretty much unbreakable. Like, yeah, they're equal GOATs. I was an Orlando fan uh, during most of the Bulls' reign. They were the, you know, arguably the greatest team of all time. 96 Bulls I'm talking to, but even though like the 97 Bulls were even more incredible somehow, they just didn't have that record. Um, and their, their dominance on both sides of the floor was just, it's, it was a work of art to watch. And um, it's very rarely through all the generations been replicated. The closest thing we've had since was the the Golden State Warriors it comes by once in a generation. So I'm happy I was lucky to witness it live. Um, as much as I hated the Bulls. 
Here we go, at the top of the class on the road, and it's time to roll.